I don't know how to feel. Um, I don't really like jam, and it's filled with like a jam, like something. It's actually like not bad. I think it's a good thing. Also, it's like two days old, so there's that. But I'm kind of like I don't want to waste it. Like no one else is gonna eat it, especially now that I warmed it up and I'm home alone. This is upsetting. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel in this video. So welcome for summer we day one. Woo 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 woo. I mean, how exciting! So, yeah, I don't know. It's just nice to be back. Nice to talk to you guys. Sorry, I won't bang on about it. Are you even straight? Guys, I'm out of, I'm, I'm out of the hang of this. I believe you are. If you're not, I'm, I apologise. But yeah, today's day one. I'm excited, but I'm actually quite busy today. Not even going to lie. I'm quite busy. I'm meeting a friend. We're going to go to the gym together. It's our... We go to the gym every Friday together to motivate us, which I'm so extremely happy about because I was not using my gym membership. And then I'm also getting my nails done because, oh my goodness, terrible. And what else? And then we might go shopping, get a little juice. And then I have to come back, get ready because I'm going out, out this evening. Interesting. But since the morning, since it started, I have done some reading and that's what I'll talk to you about. If you want to see my entire TBR, you can go watch my previous video it's only been up like a day or so so there's that that will have like a sort of idea of the physical books that i'm reading and the one that i'm most excited about is the woods are always watching by stephanie perkins now last year i read um literally this time last year for someone in last year i read her first book um there's something in the woods no there's something inside the house sorry and i read it and i absolutely loved it i really enjoyed it i thought that it, she really wrote YA very well, like Stephanie Perkins writes YA very well. I felt like they were actual teens, um, as opposed to sometimes like falling into the caricaturish ways of teens behaviour. It actually felt real to me. Not only that, but I really appreciated the romance. I thought like there wasn't any unnecessary miscommunication. I, overall, I really enjoyed it. And so then when the thriller came around, I was already invested in the characters. It was easy to read. I flew through it, etc, etc. Now I've got the sequel, The Ones Are Always Watching. It's not a sequel, sorry. It's her only other YA thriller, but they're not actually related. And I started it because I'm reading it for the prompt of read it during the dark, even though this is physical. And last year I had it on, a, on my Kindle. So it was slightly different. So I'm allowing a little bit of light to not damage my eyes. But yeah, I'm reading it for the reading in the dark and I'm on page 33. I'm really enjoying it. I actually am. It's so, it's so readable. First of all, I have not read physical in months, in absolute months. And so especially without an audio book to go alongside it. So this is the first time that I've picked up a physical book. And the fact that I read 33 pages in one go, it doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, baby steps, I really, it, it's a good sign. It's so readable. It was engaging. I am intrigued from the jump, which was also another feat to be 33 pages in and like, I want to know what finds out. I want to know what finds out. I want to know what happens. As well as that, I haven't even told you the premise. So the premise of it is that there are these two friends and they've just finished like secondary school is what I would call it. Um, I don't know what they call it here. High school, <laughs> sorry. They're both, they're, there's two friends and they've just finished high school and they're about to go to university. And one is going go local to a local university and one is going quite far and so they decide to go on a camping trip together in order to like spend some extra time together before they both go off and see each other less frequently um and that's where it started i don't know what horrorness is going to come in but i am excited for it what i've loved so far and the reason why i was like this is why i love stephanie perkins is how real it is and how close to real life i feel like this is or how close it is to my real life i guess because that's the only lived experience that i've lived um do you know what i mean i just feel like she touches on things that are just so so true and bear in mind okay i've just turned 21 so my year group a lot of my year group are finishing uni but i dropped out but i did go to university so that's my kind of experience coming into this book so i'm not far away from it but i do feel like if i had read this book a year ago even when i last summer ween it would have hit me a lot harder because some of these things i'm like that is just that is exactly right like for example they talk about the fact that there's two of them now and they used to be a bigger group they used to have 
there used to be four of them and there was a friendship breakup and now it's just the two of them so the other two they're no longer friends with them and they've moved off into other social circles etc etc and then there's this line that was really profound to me it said before they found each other they'd had different best friends but those attachments had fallen apart around the same time as their exes rose into bigger crowds Nina's to the cross-country team, Josie's to a group of girls who didn't do anything but who were moderately more attractive. Nina and Josie became a new twosome. To this day they still talked about Grace and Sarah the way others might pour over a painful romantic breakup because that's what it had felt like to lose the person who had once been each girl's most important person. Their losses were devastating. Oh my god I had like funnily enough like someone who I'm going out tonight with um it's just the two of us like <laughs> we used to also be part of a bigger friendship group that kind of splintered and so it's just you know it feels very true because like you know sometimes I feel like in society you know it's okay to talk about romantic relationships in fact it's mostly what people talk about um and the breakup and how painful it is but we don't really talk about friendship breakups and how painful that can also be I suppose it also is about how your values are and to me like in my idea of life like relationships they can come and go i mean unless you're getting married but like do you know what i mean like men boys if that's who you're into they can come and go but like your friends are they the ones who are going to be with you throughout like throughout all of these random people coming in and out of your life they're the ones that are meant to stay all of that to say that friendship breakups they they can be rough and so when i read that i was like nah for real and even the fact that it's just the two of them left i'm like yep can heavily relate to that can heavily relate to that she knows she knows what she's talking about another thing is like talking about being a failure going off to uni and being a failure for example it's like nina was afraid of failure of not being good enough and getting stuck in the economics department forever or being just good enough to find employment someday as a writer's assistant but never good enough to climb any higher do you know i studied economics so you could just even imagine <laughs> imagine where my thoughts were especially as i was dropping out like babe it was it was a tough time and so as i said a year ago i was still very much in it in fact a year ago i had just dropped out it's been about a year probably since i dropped out a year and a bit it's over it's like a year and a half but like do you know what i mean i was still very much in the thick of it so reading this then it would have been very profound but even now it's still like damn stephanie stephanie she knows what she's talking about but also there's a bit of friction between the two girls um it's not perfect and so that just reminds me of like friends that i have had and you know there's a bit of friction there's a bit of tension also thinking about friendships that i've had where i've moved away and they haven't and how that's affected it like all of those things all of those conversations i have been brought up only lightly because it's only 33 pages in but like still they've been touched upon and i'm like yes and so if you wonder why i'm a stephanie perkins full of fan Bahan girl, this is the reason. Is it reading like a five star at the moment? Absolutely not. I have to be honest with you. It's not reading like a five star. But it is reading like a book that is at least a four star and it's really making me think. It's not really making me think. It's just making me like, yeah, you've 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 seen into my life. Like you I told you about my life and you took elements and wrote it in your book. That's how it feels. But also, because I had to get up and get ready for the day, I couldn't read that anymore as well, because for the prompt of in the dark, I started an audiobook which i think i'm going to put for the thriller prompt the audiobook that i'm listening to um is run time by Catherine ryan howard now i have wanted to read a book by Catherine ryan howard for ages my like she's been on my radar for a long time so the point where i have her book the nothing man right there here it is the nothing man by Catherine ryan howard and her premises sound really good like the idea of the stories this one is about um a serial killer who a memoir has come out about him and he's reading it really interesting the runtime is a thriller it's set in ireland it's a, she's an irish author it's kind of by coastal kind of also about la and they're making a horror movie in these woods and the actor the actress who is going to be playing one of the main characters there's something you know a little bit going on like there's something in her background also like you know this this cabin in the woods it's like what's going on in the cabin in the woods i don't know i don't actually know that much else about it right now i'm like on chapter four or something and i've still got like 10 hours left of the audiobook why did i choose such a long book lord only knows but you know what it's fine because as i said i'm gonna get my nails done and i'll just be listening to it then and also on my way there i actually want to start making a move now it's 12 o'clock now um and i want to start making a move because we're going at 1 30 and so like if i give myself an hour and a half to get my nails done that feels a bit tight but i'm sure she'll be fine like i'm not even sure she'll be exactly on time so yeah i'm gonna head off 
even though I haven't had any breakfast. I don't want that. I'm not eating that. I'm going to be really honest with you. And she's back. Get into it. Get into it. What do we think? Sorry. The sun's kind of... Is that better? Can you see? Cute. Cute or whatever. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to be like classy girl vibes. But like, no, it's not even classy. I'm not even going to lie. Just like minimalist nail designs. But like, I still want something. So, there we are. Um, Yeah, I'm back. I'm back. I went, I got my nails done, I uh, went shopping, I, like, just, like, necessity shopping, but I went shopping, I went to the gym, I, we went, got some smoothies after, I had a little chat, and I'm back, and I've got an hour to get ready. Not a lot of time at all, not a lot of time at all, but, um, yeah, so I haven't done that much reading, but I've done more than you would necessarily think. I've listened to at least an hour of it, which is good, but, like, this video is gonna come to a a fast end soon so like i don't know what to tell you um as for runtime what we'll say is it's very readable like i was nervous so i got it in from the library before this readathon but i didn't start it until now and i was nervous to start it because i was scared that i wasn't gonna love it for some reason i was like i just don't know if it's gonna bang i just don't know if it's gonna hit so i yes yeah, so i was just nervous but since starting it i can see that there wasn't really any a reason for me to be nervous like that because yeah, there just wasn't necessarily a reason for me to be that nervous. It, it's very readable. Like, I put it on and I'm listening and I'm having a good old time. Like, you know, I don't... It's kind of like eerie vibes as opposed to, like, creepy things, like, are happening on the page at the moment. It's kind of like the insinuations, things are being set up still. And I don't mind a bit of a slow burn. In fact, sometimes I think that's added to it, especially in like a kind of adds to it. However, my brain is mostly when I think, oh, what am I reading for Summerween? My brain immediately jumps to the friendship thriller. So, but it's still very good and I'm enjoying it. So, yeah. I hope you appreciated the orange because that was, whether you knew it or not, that was for Summerween. So. so, yeah. As I said, I'm going out tonight. Um, I'm going to have a drinky drink. Um, and you know what? Since it's Summerween, I was like, how can I incorporate this? Because I really want my orange during the day. That's good. That's one thing. But, like, how else am I going to, like, commemorate Summerween? Um, and I thought, do you know what I could do? Do you know what sounds nice? I could have a bl Bloody Mary. I don't know. I've never had a bl Bloody Mary before. I don't know if they're good. It doesn't actually sound like me at all whatsoever. So I might hate it. But if they have it, I might get it. All right? Um, I say if they have it because it's kind of like a happy hour thing. Cheap and cheerful. But um, yeah, if they have it, I'll have it. And then it's like Bloody Mary. And I just feel like that is exactly the vibes of runtime as well. Like, it's very much creepy, like, maybe ghosty, like, if you've read it, you'll understand what I mean, especially at the beginning in the taxi ride. Like, it screams Bloody Mary. So, that's what I'll do. But, yeah, this is pretty much it. I feel kind of like, I don't know, I think I built it up in my head. But, like, I'm busy. I'm going to actually live my life. So, you've just got to take some wean daily vlogging as it is. Tomorrow, I'm in. But I might be recovering. <laughs> Maybe this isn't a good time. Maybe this is not a good time for, to be daily vlogging. But, tomorrow, here's what I'll do we shall i don't want to bake last year i baked a lot but like i don't want to bake i don't feel like baking but i'll do another hobby we'll do maybe we'll do some coloring maybe i'll here's what i'll do tomorrow i'll create a coloring page a summerween inspired coloring page and i'll also create a digital illustration and then maybe i'll print it and put it up because nothing's up anyway so might as well that's what we'll do tomorrow and hopefully that will be more summerweeny <laughs> Grow old, can't have
Grab my soul, let my heart turn stone. Guess I gotta say it twice, it ain't my fault. Every little thing. I can't believe I'm singing Christmas song. <laughs> I know, it's a bit of love. It's funny, but it's yeah. Please, yeah. I gave it to someone special. I'm going to take the initiative to say goodbye now because I don't know how I'm going to be. I might be fine. I don't, but I just would rather, I would just rather be prepared and say goodbye now. So thank you guys for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Well, I'll be filming tomorrow. Hopefully. See you tomorrow. I give it to someone special